Okay, I know this is going to be a little bit iffy since I'm shooting a computer screen, but a couple of things. The finding equations of um, trig functions seems more daunting than it actually is. I'm going to talk through it first and point out on the, uh, out on the graph of where things are, and then I'll go ahead and write everything down. Um, now remember, first thing you need to know is the vertical shift when we graph it. So first of all, notice that this vertical shift is down neg to ne negative 3. That's where the new vertical axis is. So for the first part of that, your equation, you're going to have minus 3. The next part of the equation, remember, is looking for your amplitude. And again, that should be relatively easy to find because you should be able to you know, look at it from side to side and count up from the vertical axis. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So we know for sure that this graph, even if it doesn't matter if we do sine or cosine, is going to start off with negative 3 plus or minus, depending on when you're starting for, 4 times. Now, in terms of the tr which trig function you want to do, I'm asking you to do this in terms of sine and cosine. Two reasons. If I didn't, you could just do cosine and have it down here at the bottom, so it would be a negative 3 minus 4 cosine, and then the rest of it. Um, so this would make you guys do a phase shift. In terms of do, you know where you pick it from, if you want to do regular cosine and start it up here at the top, that's fine. You could start it down here. A whole bunch of different options. I'm going to write the four clo generally the four closest ones um, to the y-axis. Um, before we get into that, with phase shifts and stuff, your period, um, I had a number of people ask me today how you find the period. Best way to do it is remember is from any place, any, between 92 points where you, the graph starts repeating itself. Your best bet is usually to pick the, either the peaks or the troughs um, because people when they try to do the middles often get stuck and only go halfway in between. So measure from peak to peak. In this case you're one, two blocks away. Then the scale down here says this pi over two. So this would be pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, so your scale is pi. Now, much like when you try to find your period, you're going to go 2 pi divided by, in this case, you know, 2 or 4 or whatever. To find out what number goes there, you're going to go ahead and go 2 pi divided by your period. So in this case, it's going to be 2 pi divided by pi, and so the number out in front of the x thing is going to be um, 2. And then in terms of the phase shift, it just depends on where you're going. If you're going to start with sine, you're halfway between these marks, and so that'd be a minus pi over four. If I started up here or over here, you'd go pi over two. So, let me go ahead and write all this stuff out. So, 6.4b, the shadow you see is my son Eli. So, um, y equals, again, the vertical shift down was minus three, so I'm gonna go minus three. Um, Let's do the plus ones first, plus four, the way I got four. Um, dude, get your foot out of the camera. Okay. First the dog, now the boys. <laughs> um, you can sit there if you're quiet. Okay. So negative three plus four. Let's do the sine one first. So sine, you got to sit over there and out of my light. Sine of, um, now he said it was... 2 pi divided by pi, so that's going to be going to be a 2, parentheses, x. And then our phase shift was half of a unit to the right. Each unit was pi over 2. So that is going to come up to be minus pi over 4, because half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. So that would be for sine. For a positive cosine, you're going to have something very similar, except it's going to be cosine. The 2 is going to stay. Your shift, however, is over a full unit, which is half of a pi. So it's going to be x minus pi over 2. And again, so those would be two that I would expect. Uh, the other two that would be okay to do would be y equals a negative three minus four sine of two pi. So, pardon me, his son's playing Battlefront. Caleb, please, not so loud. Go. Um, so, negative sine starts at half of a unit to the left. It's going down, so it'd be plus pi over 2, and then you get y is equal to a minus 3 minus 4 cosine of 2x, because the bottom of that just go ahead and works on the bottom. Okay? So that is A. Let me get B up. Let me get the second one. I'm going to go to the right on this. Yeah. All right. So for this one, um, things of note: scale is pi over eight. So each one of these blocks going left and right is going to be pi over eight. 
scale down negative two or down to negative two. Your amplitude is going to be three. So we have negative two plus three times your trig function. Your period is going from here to here. So you're going from, Caleb, you are being really loud. Please stop. So you're going from crest to crest. Now, you can do this one of two different ways. You can start here, and so you, okay, it's midway through here, so you're gonna go one, two, three, four. So it's gonna be four pi over eight. So four pi over eight is pi over two. Um, so to figure out that number, you would take two pi divided by four pi over, or pi over two, and you'd end up with four. So that's going to be the number there. And then the phase shift is going to depend upon where you start. So if you're here for sine, up here for cosine, negative cosine, negative sine. Now notice it is half, these th points are halfway in between the tick marks. So you're going to be halfway from pi over 6, or pick me pi over 8. So that means it would be pi over 6. Here you would be um, adding, for the, for the negative cosine, you'd be adding pi over 16, subtracting pi over 16, subtracting 3 pi over 16. And then subtracting, if you're going to go all the way over to here, it would be 5 pi over 16. You'd probably be better off subtracting 3 pi over 16 to back up for cosine there. So to write those out for you. So since I didn't number, we're going to say upper right. Your three best options are y equals. Now most of this is going to stay the same again, remember. Minus 2 plus... 3 sine, we have 4, and again the reason for that 4 is that we have 2 pi divided by, and we said that we had 4, of the, it was pi over 2. So you get 2 pi times 2 over pi, so that's going to equal 4. And then you have x, and then the sine is closest one starting is over on the right hand side, so that was 1 and a half marks, so that would be a total of 3 pi over 16. Okay, so for the second one, if we're going to do cosine, I would say start on the left hand side since that's closer. It's going to, so you get minus 2 plus 3 cosine 4 of x. Now that backs up 3 pi over 16 to the left, so that means we're going to add it that way. If I'm going to do negative sines and cosines, I get that. Now the negative one is actually probably one of the closest ones, and so that's going to be minus pi over 16. And then this one, I've got this minus cosine 4, and the minus cosine starts at the bottom, just to the right, a half a mark, half of, again, pi over 8 is pi over 16, so that'd be that function there. Okay? For the third graph. And go lower left hand corner this time. And oops. There we go. Okay. Couple of things here to note. You're up three in this case. Amplitude of two. Period. Probably the one of the more most important things I well, they're all important. One of the hard, it, not as easy to see. I've got one, two, three, four sections to go across. Now, I've got four units to go across. Each unit is pi over three. So I have a period of five or four pi over three. So I would take two pi and divide it by four pi over three. And so I believe you get three halves for that by the time you go do that math out. And then in terms of the shifts, now notice again, it's off just a little bit. So like this section right here, you're going to have is half of a period, half of one of these, you know, scales, so that'd be pi over 6. So you would say this would be plus pi over 6 if I was doing sine, minus pi over 6 in your parentheses if it's doing positive cosine. If you were doing negative sine, I'd probably do this one, so it's going to be or minus 3 pi over 16, or then coming back over here would be plus 3 pi over 16 because I'm backtracking. And you generally want to write the equation with the closest value to the y-axis. So again, to write those up, and hopefully you were trying to write them down and now we're just double checking stuff. So, so lower left, so I have y is equal to, I'm up three, amplitude of two, we'll do sine first. Now again, remember, we had a period of 
4 pi over 3. So I'm going to divide that into 2. So 2 times 3 over 3 into 2 pi. I'm sorry, so 2 pi. So over 2 pi, and that's going to be a 4. The 2 and the pi divides out, this becomes 2, so my answer is 3 halves. So out in front of the parentheses, I have 3 halves. X minus, and for sine, we're shifting it to the left, pi over 6, so we're going to say minus pi over 6. For cosine, everything stays the same with the exception of the shift and the function. And for cosine, you are starting up, you're shifting it right pi over 6, and so that's going to be, I'm sorry, that should be plus, this should be plus, minus. Hope some of you, one of you caught that. Y equals 3 minus 2 sine of 3 halves. Now for the minus 1, you're shifting that to three one and a half units to the right, so that would be one and a half times pi over 3, so it's going to be x, and that's going to be, well actually that would be 3 pi over 6, so that's actually going to be pi over 2. That's the interesting thing when you use thirds and sixths and halves. The last one, minus um, 2 cosine of 3 pi, or 3 halves, and then down on the bottom, you're shifting 3 to the left, so again that's going to be 3 halves times pi over 6. So again, that's how we're coming up with, or pi over 3, so that's how we're coming up with pi over 2. And then that's going to be plus pi over 2. So that's going to be your 4 there. Last one. Let me jump it over. All right. Your scale here is pi over four. Couple of interesting notes. Um, it's up one, amplitude of three. Your period hit is two, which means that um, your period is gonna be pi over two because it's two pi over four. Um, your shifts, you don't really have too much, too many shifts that you're gonna do in terms of cosine. Again, I'm gonna write it in all terms of four. You wouldn't have a shift if it was a sine. It'd be half of one of these blocks if it's cosine, so that'd be half of that, so it's gonna be pi over eight. Negative cosine would be pi over four. Um, and then probably for negative cosine, you'd pop it over here and you'd be at pi over eight. So, lower right. So y is equal to 1 plus 3 sine. And we said um, period is pi over 2. So again, 2 pi divided by pi over 2 is going to give me a 4, much like before. So it's going to be 4. And if we're just going to do sine, it's going to be x. Directions didn't say that, though. We said to do it in terms of cosine. So cosine of 4. And if you look at cosine, the startup, again, is right pi over 4. So we're going to say minus pi. It's going to be pi over 8, because it's half of a mark. So we do that. y is equal to 1 plus 3. Excuse me. Let's go minus 3 sine of 4. And so the minus there, you've got two options. You could go either left or right. Um, so you could either go plus or minus pi over 4, actually. And then for the cosine, 1 minus 3 cosine of 4 x. And now for cosine, the closest place would be to the left. And so we're going to say plus pi over 8. So those would be your four options for that. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to get the, these two up, and then I'll get the third one up in a minute.